Hello again. I'm back. I kind of ended that last segment on a, a pretty heavy note. The time period I was talking about was around 1958. Anyway, if I look at the current Church of Scientology, um, as I've excuse me, mentioned in previous discussions, it's uh, quite a different uh, organization from what my best hopes might have been for it. And um, the people that run it, or are its primary executives and so forth, um, are not the kind of people that um, I expected would one day operate Scientology. I think they're operating it from a standpoint that somehow interferes with the best ideas of Dianetics and Scientology with what seems to be too great an attention, for example, on the subject of money. Too great an attention, for example, on the subject of ornate buildings, as though those have something to do with the fundamentals of Dianetics and Scientology. Too much attention on the militaristic dictatorship uh, that Ron eventually developed. He, he became a paramilitary dictator, which um, back in Dianetics days we would say, okay, this guy is nuts, he thinks he's Napoleon, so just run some of the engrams and do the different things and, until he stops walking around thinking he's Napoleon. Uh, but Ron <laughs> developed a character that was a mixture of the Catholic Church, the 17th century British Navy, and uh, uh, some of, just some of the worst ideas of dict military religious military dictatorship and uh, as a result from some standpoints he became a figure of ridicule but at the same stand thing he had so much power that he could uh, harm people most directly and especially the people that hung around and worked with him because working for a military or religious dictator is not a safe position and many people went down and out the bottom and bit the tubes if Ron was displeased with them because military dictators are not, aren't usually very kind. It's true, they may get a lot done. You know, Hitler was a military dictatorship and uh, so forth. You may affect, cause great effects, but they may be contrary. You know, like the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, which later became... Inquisition in England and Italy and so forth. And those were hardly the ideas of um, a nice Jewish boy named um, Ye Yeshua or Jesus in Latin or Greek. Uh, I don't think that anybody in their wildest dreams could imagine that Jesus, or his Hebrew name, which is Yeshua, would have developed an Inquisition as a foremost expression of faith. You know, where you burn people at the stake and all those, you persecute them throughout the world for heresy and all kinds of things. So look at, from, all the way from Jesus and his sweet mother Miriam and his daddy Joe, uh, Yosef, we go all the way from there in about, I don't know, a little more than a, a thousand years we end up with, this, with the Inquisition calling itself we're doing all these things in the name of Jesus the Prince of Peace so Ron in a very short time developed a, 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 a theo, the, theocracy milit, paramilitary dictatorship took him I don't know only 20 years he was very fast at it 20, 25 years and there it was and called it the sea organization with uniforms and swagger sticks and daggers and God knows what all. It was very heavy and completely contrary to the basics of everything he put out. So naturally, uh, today's leaders of the church were raised that way. 
They weren't raised with the 1950, early 1960 L. Ron Hubbard. They only knew L. Ron Hubbard, who was like, take him to the chain locker and feed him on bread and water. Put him there, do this, throw him overboard, do all kinds of things. So your current church leadership are people that were influenced by the, the craziest aspect of L. Ron Hubbard. Sorry to have to say that, Ron, but uh, sorry to say that David Miscavige, who was just a little boy once upon a time, an innocent child who was carried away in the middle of that of a totalitarian nightmare that was the invalidation of all that went before it. The fact that what went before it is so effective and so beautiful keeps sucking people in, and then they then they get the treatment. But the stuff still works. Whether well, Ron Hubbard ended up as a military dictator or not, the auditing and training and all the great things that came out from 1949 to 1962, great stuff. The books are great, the philosophy is great. You can make every bit of it work. I've made it a, a, a part of my life to check every bit of it out, it can all be made to work. Maybe not to the degree that L. Ron Hubbard claimed, but often, often, no absolutes, please. So uh, it's a tragedy that the kids that were just kids then, who grew up to become the managers of the church, uh, had the Ron that became a, a, a religious paramilitary dictator as their god. So if you, if you wonder how the church got so wacky and so scary and did so many strange things and why countries like Germany say, no, we had Hitler, we don't want Hubbard. We don't need another military dictator. And so places like Germany and France and other who have seen totalitarianism at its worst try to drive Scientology away because it's still carrying on Ron's tradition, not Scientology, but the church organization, etc. is carrying on his traditions, his military dictatorship, and these people in Europe are like, no more military dictatorships, please. Okay? Um, so, so that's just something that's good to know, and it's good to know how did the church get that way. It's no mystery. It, it, it's easy, very straightforward. Uh, the church's founder, and if you have, went over the hoops and ended up becoming just what I've been talking about. You understand. But don't confuse that person and what they became with something called Scientology or Dianetics. They're different. Now we're talking about a philosophy and a series of practices that have a lot of help and admiration in them that can do wonders for people. You don't have to bankrupt them either to do it. There's just tremendous stuff. And you don't require the church in order to get it. And if you do go into the church, as I once said to a son-in-law, watch out. <laughs> My son-in-law, former son-in-law, will go unnamed at this time. But anyway, um, having said that, delivered another blow for a greater freedom, I shall... Uh, Take another break. Thank you.